Well, it's been a while since we uh, addressed this uh, maybe 1974 VW thing. Um, I believe it was July 10th was the last time that we had done a little update on it. So today what we're going to do is we're going to give you another little uh, status update here of how this is coming along. Uh, we still have a lot of little details to take care of. Um, and so that's uh, um, what kind of let me see just the status that we are currently in the interior here. And we've got the battery box behind the seat. Um, we'll look at the other battery box in the front. And we'll look at the, um, the, the engine bay. So let's get started. So this is under the bonnet of the thing. We have our front battery box. We have our 3.3 kilowatt charger. We have a junction box here which has the electronics that on like a, a bug or um, other vehicles where it's under the dash, behind the dash. The way that the thing is, there really isn't a, a good location to do that. So all that is in here. Um, we have our inertia switch on the wall there. And then of course our J1772 charge port. Um, still need to do some cleaning and stuff up here. Let's review the dash real quick. We didn't drill any holes or anything in the dash. As I mentioned before, uh, the two switches. And so over here we have the reverse switch which lights up blue and we have uh, coast mode right there lights up green and of course the Curtis 840 display which monitors the inverter and motor 12 volt uh, gauge and then our J1772 uh, J1772 our JLD 404 uh, intelligent amp meter that uh, monitors the battery pack so Let's take a look at the engine bay here. And so the last time uh, we, we had run the, the 12 volt wiring and, and uh, the control wiring. So this is not the motor that will go in there. We just use it as a placeholder. That motor is actually the one out of our sand rail. Uh, it just happens to be an AC50 also. So, good placeholder. We were waiting on the uh, flywheels, so uh, the motor's in there uh, just as a placeholder. It's just connected to the adapter. There's no coupler on it, no flywheel, no clutch. It's just in here to allow us to do the fitment of our, our panels and uh, the, the lengths of the um, cabling and that kind of stuff just 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 for the fit and it's only being held on with the two top bolts and so just real quick for us to, to remove it um, we just have the encoder wiring sitting right there so what we're going to do next is we will uh, remove these panels and these side panels come out very quickly and easily we'll disconnect the encoder uh, lines we'll remove the um, wiring harness here from the um, uh, controller get that out of the way like I said we'll we'll disconnect the three cables going into the motor and then pull the motor out and we'll pull the motor out and put this one out of the way, get the motor for this out of the box, install the coupler, the adapter, the flywheel, the clutch, 
and put it back inside. So since that last video, you can see that we, we ran all of our um, high voltage cabling. And so let's just do a, a quick overview of that high voltage cabling. So our most positive point is in this front battery pack. It comes out, goes to our main disconnect switch, and also the main disconnect switch here. Um, we have our charger goes there. We have um, a line that goes to our instrumentation, uh, things like that. But the other line that comes out is going uh, through a gland nut. goes through that upright right there which is the original heater riser and goes through that and is channeled through the original heater ducting all the way back and, and comes up right here then of course goes through our main contactor and to your controller the negative side goes um, well, let's 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 take the other side of that front battery box. So that was their most positive. The other side of the, the this battery box comes out, goes through our main fuse, which is in here. So it's the fuse is between the two battery boxes. Comes out of the fuse and goes back and um, comes to our our comes up from below just like this one did which was our most positive this has come from that front battery box comes up here and goes through the firewall and to our battery box goes through the battery box and so this would be our most negative point in our traction pack comes out it goes through the firewall comes through behind everything comes out here and goes to our shunt goes through the shunt into the most negative on our or to the negative on our controller you can see on the shunt we also have um, a line that goes to the DC to DC converter right here that's the negative side this is our negative that goes up to the charger um, this is the positive going to the DC to DC converter and has um, a fuse. This side right here, there, this line right here, that's going to the KSI input. So it actually comes from here and goes over to our terminal strip and it goes through the KSI relay and that's providing the traction pack voltage KSI input for this Curtis. 1238 controller. So that was the high voltage stuff run. And of course, our three phases UV and W right here. So, not a whole lot to it, guys. It's pretty easy if you know the big picture, know what you're doing, know what size cabling you need, um, properly crimp your lugs, blah, blah, blah. This is not finished, as I mentioned. Of course, we're going to be removing the motor. But we wait till the end before we put our, our boots on and everything. And you can see right now we're going to be removing this again. Uh, or not again, but we're going to remove this to remove the motor and stuff. But just leave those things off till last, till our testing is done. So I can easily, you know, get readings and stuff without the boots being in the way. That kind of thing. They're really easy to put on afterwards that this gives us a chance to do it and and see the angles that we like and so this is just you know temporary at the time so that we can do some testing and so we did the uh, the low voltage stuff but let's let's turn on the ignition and see what happens now that we have the high voltage connected So I'm going to turn on the ignition here. When I do, our little 
system on light comes on and the uh, JLD 404 showing that we have um, two amps going out that's you know energy being used for the inverter and for the um, DC to DC converter. Let me go around to the other side here and get a better angle. You can see that the DC to DC converter is working as we have so much glare. As you can see, we have about 13.8 volts. And of course, the um, 840 display is showing RPMs and it's amps, volts, you know, motor temperature. Controller temperature, minimum voltage, maximum amps, RPMs. So, what we're going to do just to show you that everything is hooked up and working is we're going to give it a little bit of throttle here. There's no flywheel on there or anything. You can hear it. I'm going to go down here so you can see it. We have a little line on the motor shaft. This is kind of hard to do because I'm looking at it from above and holding the camera up. So, give it a little bit of throttle. You can see she's turning. You notice which way she's turning? Clockwise. Let's go flip the reverse switch. My battery's about ready to go dead here battery on the camera that is. So reverse switch right there you can see it. blue halo we're in reverse and so reverse lights are on and we should see that motor turn the other direction. Sure enough. So there you have it. That's the current status. Put it back and forward. Turn off the ignition.